Finally, he found the lamp Mustafa had asked for. He asked his uncle to give him a hand getting out of the cave, but Mustafa told him that he wanted to see the lamp first. Aladdin, who was suspicious of his uncle, thought that Mustafa would take the lamp and leave him, so the boy refused to give him the lamp. Mustafa got angry. Listen, boy, I'm not your real uncle and I don't care about you. I will leave you here if I want. Since you don't want to give me the lamp, I will block the cave with this huge rock, he shouted, and left Aladdin inside. The boy sat in the dark and cried with the lamp in his hands which he blamed for his misery. Stupid old lamp! It's not even made of gold, and it doesn't work! He cried. He rubbed the lamp a few times to wipe off the dust, when a genie suddenly came out of it. Master, I will grant you three wishes. Be careful with your choices, he said, and waited. Aladdin was shocked, but he quickly answered, Take me home! And just the next moment, he was sitting at home right before his mother, who almost fainted at the appearance of her son out of the blue. Aladdin told her all about Mustafa, the cave, and the treasure. While talking about the treasure, Aladdin rubbed his ring and a second genie appeared. This time, Aladdin's mother fainted. Master, I can grant you two wishes. Choose carefully, advised the genie, and waited. That's easy. Give us enough gold and gemstones so that we can be rich until the end of our lives, and even longer, said Aladdin. Their old house disappeared in a moment, and Aladdin and his mother found themselves sitting in one of the many rooms of their palace, dressed in silk and cashmere. And they lived happily ever after, until... One day, as he was walking around the city with his friends... Aladdin saw an exceptionally beautiful girl. He immediately fell in love with her. She was the Sultan's daughter, the young Princess Yasmin. She was the gentlest, most adorable, and the very prettiest girl he had ever met. Princess Yasmin liked him too, and a few days later, Aladdin went to the palace where the Sultan lived. I want to marry your daughter. Aladdin said to the sultan as if he were a sultan too. Instead of getting angry, the sultan laughed. <laughs> you will have to have a palace at least like mine to ask for my daughter's hand, he said. You will have that palace by tomorrow, Aladdin replied. And the same night when he was alone, he asked the genie from the lamp to grant him his second wish, to have a palace as big as the sultan's and right next to it. The palace was there the next morning. The sultan let his daughter marry Aladdin. After the sultan's death, Aladdin ruled the country and everyone lived happily. This news reached Mustafa, who knew how Aladdin had become so rich and powerful. He thought of a plan to get the lamp. He waited for Aladdin to leave the palace and stood under Yasmin's window, shouting as loud as he could, New lamps for old lamps, only today in the city. New lamps for old lamps. And people started crowding around him. Soon he noticed the princess among them. She thought she could exchange the old ugly lamp which Aladdin liked so much and kept in their bedroom. As soon as he got hold of the lamp, Mustafa immediately rubbed it and the genie came out of it with the same words. Master, I will grant you three wishes. Be careful of your choice. Stop talking, Mustafa yelled. I want you to take me, Yasmin, and her palace as far away from here as you can. So far that Aladdin wouldn't find us even if he rode for three days and three nights. When Aladdin came back in the evening, he found, to his surprise, that Yasmin and the whole palace were missing. He searched for them for three days and three nights, and when he couldn't find them on his own, Aladdin rubbed the ring and asked the genie.